Hello everyone and welcome back to TSN or the Sasuke Nerds, god that still feels really weird to say again. And in today's video I'm going to be doing an up to date and new version of the Sasuke tournament tier list. Yes this is one of our classic videos from all the way back in the old TSN days, it's been what nearly 4 years since the first edition of this, we have quite a few new tournaments, all that jazz you know. But yeah obviously I think it's pretty much uh, time to revisit this and uh, do this tier list again because not only do we have three new tournaments that uh, I'm able to cover but also uh, it's safe to say that my opinions on tournaments have uh, significantly changed since the last time I did one of these which you're gonna see very soon but yeah obviously we're gonna go from Sasuke 1 all the way up to Sasuke 39 I'm gonna give my opinions I'm gonna briefly comment on each of the tournaments and explain what I like and dislike about each tournament obviously we have seven tiers here ranging from S which is the best all the way to F which is the worst as you could probably guess but yeah uh, like I said just gonna briefly comment on all of them give my opinions on them and if you disagree with them good I don't want you to agree with me I am NOT a voice of reason and if you have your own rankings of course I will leave a link to this in the description below this tier list and if you have any differing opinions from me make sure to comment and I probably won't respond to it and I'll probably think I'll probably hate you for disagreeing with me because I'm always right and you're wrong. Sasuke 38 is good. But yeah, without a further ado, uh, no more BS. Let's get into it, starting with the classic Sasuke 1. Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't really have a lot to say about Sasuke 1. It's, I mean, it's the tournament that started it all. Uh, only tournament to date that's been indoors for Sasuke. But, you know, again, there's not really a lot to say. It's, it's a primitive tournament. Uh, it's a by far a product of its time clearly obviously still in the era of Banzuke and all that where Sasuke was kind of born uh, But yeah, honestly, it is it is a solid tournament. Uh, it's quite entertaining the whole way through I really do appreciate the fact that they've shown all 100 runners always love to see that uh, even if we only saw it a couple of times and uh, It's a reason why I enjoy the Paravis quite a bit, but you know Sasuke one, you know for what it is. It's a good starting point um, I don't think anyone's gonna really complain about me putting it in the B tier It is a solid tournament, and I always enjoy watching it Now Sasuke 2, you know was a huge moment for Sasuke not only was it the first tournament to be held at the classic Midoriyama studios, but you know, it, it kind of set the stage for what Ninja Warrior is today It is a huge turning point in the show because it's been given its own set, and honestly, it benefited from it quite a bit, you know? Uh, I think we had a lot more interesting results. We had some familiar faces. We saw the dawn of some competitors, you know? And I feel like overall, it was, it was a good tournament. Although I felt the final stage was slightly less um, interesting compared to Sasuke 1. Obviously, we had less people, and uh, neither of them... Well, Hikaru Tanaka was a uh, rookie, and Kiramori didn't really give a good show. I felt like the rest of the stages made up for that, because I felt like they were a bit more interesting than Sasuke 1. But, yep, obviously, Sasuke 2, I believe, is a classic tournament. One of the most important moments in the show. Uh, but, do I see myself revisiting it a lot um, more than I usually used to? Uh, no, but I can't deny that's a good tournament, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. Now, Sasuke 3... Man, Sasuke 3's final stage is among is among one of my favorites. Not only because Yamada, but honestly, it was just such a roller coaster all the way around. Sure, you had a few people who flopped, but like 3's final stage, you had Yamada and you had Shingo almost almost winning it, and you know that really showed progress, which we didn't really get into uh, or won for that matter. You always had people kind of struggling at the final, and 3 really showed that okay. This course can be beaten. Also with Sasuke 3, we saw significantly more new obstacles. Obviously, the a lot of iconic obstacles made their debut, such as the rolling log and the rope climb, which, you know, they're, they're classic obstacles. Rolling log, one of the most iconic staples of Sasuke of all time, one of the most iconic obstacles, one of the greatest obstacles. And the rope climb, you know, it's, it's better than the rock wall, at the very least. But yeah, Sasuke 3 is one of those tournaments that I, th I think is universally enjoyed, and I enjoyed a lot, and, you know, it still holds up to this day. I think it's the first A-tier tournament, you know? 
Now, Sasuke 4. I have a lot to say about Sasuke 4. Obviously, you know, gotta get the elephant out of the room. First uh, tournament with a win. Kazuhiko Akiyama achieving total victory in Sasuke 4 with 6 seconds left. Great moment. Finally, the relatively easy course of Sasuke 1 to 4 can go. But that's kind of my issue with 4. 37 stage 1 clears. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's really all I have to say. It was, it really wasn't fun watching stage one because it was just, it wasn't fun seeing so many clears. Like I'm someone who likes a lot of clears, but 37, 37, yeah, a Akiyama winning was needed. If, if Akiyama didn't win, I could not imagine how many people would have cleared in five. And also of course, you know, the cliffhanger was introduced in Sasuke 4 and uh, can you ever complain about the cliffhanger? I mean, it, it's, it's the cliffhanger. That being introduced single-handedly made stage three interesting. Also, like, the pipe slider was significantly buffed. Uh, that was also kind of neat because the obstacle, apart from people falling off the track, was kind of a joke. Something that kids could do. Uh, that's kind of proven by sort of training, by, like, gyms and all that. But yeah, regardless, uh, I still do think 4 is a good tournament. Is it as good as 3? I don't really think so, but, you know, I still respect 4 for what it is. Obviously, first total of victory, that really boosts up quite a bit, so I'm going to put 4, four in the B tier. Now, I remember when I first did this, I think I put Sasuke 5 in the S tier because I thought it was one of, if not the greatest renewal tournaments of all time. Do I think that's still the case nowadays? Well, I still love Sasuke 5 to death, but I don't think it takes its place among the best of the best of the best. Don't get me wrong, once again, great tournament. The changes to the course were absolutely needed and we got some of the most iconic and like greatest obstacles of all time of course the warp wall first off the warped freaking wall was introduced the jump hang was introduced like sasuke 5 was probably one of the most important moments in the show's history purely because of the amount of things that it introduced to the show that still stick around almost 25 years later and sasuke 5 will forever hold a special place and i think everyone's hearts because of that but however 5 of course it it really isn't without its issues stage one i mean a lot of people have issues with the fact that stage one and two were a complete blowout and only Shingo made it through the made it through the third stage, but I don't mind it too much, but admittedly when you have double digit clears every single time and you end up with three, that's kinda like woo. Uh kind of a bit overkill, don't you think, Yushio? But no, I still I still love five for what it is. It was effective renewal, it was a needed renewal, and you know, it made the show what it wanted to stay, and I kinda instantly respect it. Easy eight tier. Sasuke 6. Oh boy. Um, I see a lot of differing opinions on Sasuke 6. I, especially recently, I know a lot of people who think this tournament is among all one of the all-time greats. And I know a lot of people who see this tournament as honestly kind of boring outside of Yamada. And what camp am I in? Well, honestly, I like this tournament quite a lot. Uh, I think it's a classic. I think uh, stage three is fantastic. I love stage three. Uh, even if we had about 5,000 people failing the body prop, but regardless, you know, Yamada's run does kind of make this tournament, if I'm being completely honest, but you know, I don't care a whole lot. Six is a very fun watch the whole way through, even if we got about 50 trillion cuts in stage one, which I'm always not a huge fan of. I'm not a fan of cuts but you know regardless six it holds itself well it's a great tournament um m capped off with a fantastic moment in the show's history six goes into the a tier sasuke seven gave us our first look at the brand new final stage the spider climb and the rope climb uh but other than that outside of that moment seven doesn't really captivate me that much compared to these six tournaments don't get me wrong Still a very good watch, but I think out of the first, I want to say eight tournaments, seven is the weakest, but then again, that isn't really saying a lot considering that era is absolutely fantastic and has zero filler, all killer. But I think if you're going to have near perfection, uh, seven kind of has to stand out on its own, even if it is on its own, a good tournament gave us, uh, you know, the introduction of Makoto Nagano. Uh, it was his first tournament, even if I don't think he was shown in seven but regardless you know 
7 does have things going for it, obviously, as the aforementioned Shingo Yamamoto run. And, of course, we had uh, breakout stars like Kenji Takahashi making his breakout. Uh, we had Hironori Kaboki getting to the third stage on his rookie appearance. Uh, we had James Okada somehow getting to stage three, even though he didn't deserve to get past the first. But still, I do think seven is the weakest, but I still do think it is a B-tier tournament, albeit barely. I would kind of, if I had to, put it here, but, you know, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put seven in the B-tier. Sasuke 8. Upon revisiting this tournament, wow, this tournament is fun. The rain, although I think it is probably the biggest thing holding this back from being an S tier tournament, the rain, in like in terms of like the storytelling that this tournament has, the rain is incorporated really well, and I like that quite a lot, especially in regards to the first stage and the final stage. First stage, obviously, it was a huge issue with the warp wall being fucking slippier than the backstream slide, but you know, the huge moments in regards to Sasuke 8 obviously are Katsumi Yamada failing the first stage and quote-unquote retiring. You're going to hear that a lot. And, of course, the final stage. Jordan Jovchev getting there on his rookie appearance and Kane Kiksugi, after five attempts, finally making it past the third stage. And that final stage was a sight to behold. Kane Kiksugi's run, obviously one of the most iconic moments in the show's history, both in terms of importance and, like, how monumental it was, and uh, emotional impact. It was Kane's as of recording final appearance in Sasuke, and uh, we haven't seen him since in 20 years. But yeah, eight, obviously, I don't have much to complain about it. It is A tier, I would say the closest to S so far, but yeah. Now, if you think these uh, rankings are quite high, don't worry, we're gonna bring it down to earth with Sasuke 9. Now, yes, Sasuke 9 does have its fair share of good moments. You have Makoto Nagano's breakout run, obviously, you know, <laughs> Nagano. Y you you might have heard of him. He's, he's, kind he's kind of a big deal. Yeah, him getting to the third stage was honestly probably the only moment of the tournament for me that was kind of... Like, if I recall Sasuke 9, it is the first thing I remember, but... But yeah, honestly, when 9... It's the first tournament out of these eight where I really don't have a lot to say because I just can't really recall a whole lot of interesting things that happened here. I mean, yeah, you had, you did have, to be fair, you had uh, Akiyama filling the quad steps. That was a shocking moment. But again, other than that, I really only remember Nagano. And granted, it was a huge moment. Nagano breaking out, like, kind of gave us what Sasuke is today. But other than that... 9 just doesn't hold up as much as these other tournaments, and it's going to go in the C tier. Now we get our first anniversary tournament. It is Sasuke 10. It's kind of nearly the same deal with Sasuke 9 in terms of there only being one big standout moment, and other than that, not too much else to talk about. Sure, you had a few new obstacles. You had the dance bridge getting introduced and the balance tank, but other than that, there wasn't really any huge changes to the course at this point. And yeah, only one huge standout moment, which was, of course, uh, Yamada falling into the water at the pipe slider for the second time. Um, which was his kind of a, and also was his last stage three appearance can't even say it's a date there's no way in hell he's getting there again don't fucking comment that but yeah that's my issue with sasuke 9 and sasuke 10 there really isn't a whole lot to say about it other than one significant moment and for that and it's going to be unpopular to say 10's going in the c tier now sasuke 11 uh for the longest time with sasuke 11 i didn't really like it all that much because like with 9 and 10 i just thought it was fairly forgettable compared to the first eight tournaments but i revisited it sometime this year earlier this year and i was for the most part proven wrong because there is a lot to talk about in terms of sasuke 11. i mean the big elephant in the room kazuhiko akiyama finally making it past the first stage after so many attempts after his total victory uh, in dramatic fashion, almost timing out. You had Shinji Kobayashi breaking out and almost getting to the final stage on his, uh, on his breakout run, failing the pipe slider. Admittedly, he shouldn't have even failed it in the first place. He should have dismounted while he could. And, of course, you had Makoto Nagano's first final stage run of many. So, yeah, there is, admittedly, on upon revisiting, a lot to love about Sasuke 11. And for that reason, I'm gonna put it in the B column. Sasuke 
12. Oh man, 12 was a huge return to form for the show. After 9, 10, and parts of 11 were kind of underwhelming in terms of uh, compared to the first 8, 12 was the first tournament in the show I felt that truly just stood out as its own. It was utterly fantastic front to back. I mean, me need I say more? You have Yamada's last ever stage two appearance, Akiyama almost getting back to the final stage. You had Bunpei Shiratori making it to the final stage, Azaoka making it to the final stage, and I mean, do I really gotta explain what else happened in Sasuke 12? Makoto Nagano probably pulling off, apart from his Kanzen Seiha, the most notable final stage attempt in the show's history. 0.11 seconds is how much he missed Kanzen Seiha by, and you know, it kind of marked, uh, it kind of marked the beginning of a period of Nagano, apart from his constant Seiya, where he would almost win. Time and time and time again, even in different shows, he would just be so close. And it really kind of was the tournament where Nagano just became the legend. He went from just being, oh, he got to the final stage and he's pretty good, I guess, to just being transformed into the world's strongest fisherman, Makoto Nagano, the legend of Sasuke. And, you know... 12 is always going to hold a special place in my heart and always stand its ground as one of the all-time greats, and it's going in the S tier. And following uh, Nagano's near miss, Sasuke 13 saw a lot of revamps and uh, renewals, most notably in the first stage where we saw a complete and utter overhaul of the course. You have the prison tilt. The ruling log got a couple of drops on it. You got the cross bridge. The jump hang was turned into a bunch of ropes. You got the crooked wall, the rope climb was modified. The list goes on and on with the amount of changes that came in Sasuke 13, and I like almost all of them. But I think the issue with Sasuke 13 is, in the end, it didn't even matter. Because, you know what happened? Nagano made it to the final stage again. So yeah, al although they did fail in their goal of stopping Nagano, gee, don't that s doesn't that seem familiar? course renewals being made explicitly just to take down one single competitor. Where have I heard that before? That seems oddly familiar to me. Hmm. But yeah, Sasuke 13, you know, I do think it is a little bit underrated compared to, because I, I know some people give 13 a bit of slack for, you know, some of the obstacles not really sticking as, as they should have, but that really isn't a huge deal to me. I had quite a bit of fun watching 13 and re-watching 13. And you know, even outside of the whole Nagano thing, there was a lot of good moments in the show. For example, of course, we had Bunpei almost clearing again, uh, just falling back. And this was also the first tournament where we didn't get Katsumi Yamada, which left Shingo Yamamoto, uh, which still stands to this day as the only competitor to have competed in every single Sasuke tournament. So there's that. But yeah, 13 I do think is enjoyable even to this day, and I think some people who do give it a bit of slack should just really revisit it, because it is quite fun. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I wonder what Shaq is gonna give this tournament, because this is the tournament that Shinsuke Nagasaki debuted in. He's gonna give it S for sure. Uh, yeah, Sasuke 14 is pretty good. Uh, yeah, obviously, of course, everyone's gonna expect me to say, yeah, this is the tournament where, uh, Shinsuke Nagasaki unfortunately debuted in but you know i don't want to talk about shinsuke constantly because you know uh it's kind of my brand at this point i kind of want to move away from it at, le at least for this tier list because sasuke 14 is a good tournament that has a lot more going for it obviously after some of the 13 obstacles kind of sucked we got some new ones we got the the cone jump we also got the um we got the butterfly wall the jump hang was reverted back to what it was which honestly is kind of funny koda honma for a, a 14 year old kid probably just being a, a foot away from uh, getting to the first stage because uh, he dipped his feet into the jump hang water and oh look even after threatening to retire that's the second time now uh, if you're keeping count yamana comes back and what does he do he fails the jump hang fucking wonderful yamana congratulations was it worth it? Probably not. I know, look, you also have the Ham Brothers, uh, joining in on this tournament, and, uh, you know, they were fine. They didn't really do that well in this tournament, but, you know, it's the Ham Brothers, your favorite Americans. And also, it's a good thing that, uh, Nagano all finally was stopped by some monkey bars. But yeah, 14 goes into the B tier.
Sasuke 15, you know, 15 I think gets a bit of slack, you know, for kind of being 14 too, and to an extent I agree, but I still do think on its own 15 does kind of hold its own, and I do think it is also a little bit underrated, because there's a lot of great moments to 15. Sure, it kind of got a bit stale, the course got a bit stale, and the results started getting also a bit stale, especially as we didn't get any real progress at all with uh, Takeda failing the Devil Blanco, so. But I do think there was a lot of uh, funny moments about this tournament, you know. Sasuke 15, as you remember, was the tournament where Yamada fell off the cross bridge, which I thought was pretty funny. We also got Nagasaki's first stage three attempt, Morgan Ham getting all the way to the curtain cling. Uh, Shiro Tori, you know, after suffering his heat stroke, getting all the way to the climbing bars before he literally just gassed out from exhaustion. Oh yeah, and we also got the hurdle jump, which gave us the closest to date that Yazu Aoki has come to clearing the first obstacle. That's the only thing the hurdle jump is notable about it. It really isn't that good of an obstacle in my opinion. But yeah, overall, 15, it's, it's fine. Sasuke 16, however, is literally a sequel. It is a sequel to a sequel. And when, an, and when a tournament is a sequel to a tournament, that's something I'm not exactly a huge fan of, and you guys know this about me. 16 really just doesn't have anything, in my opinion. Sure, the whole tournament presented on paper was fine, but at this point, the show was really, really starting to get stale. The course was just hard enough to where there wasn't really any progress to be made because stage three was just so taxing on people that they couldn't really get past it. No one really knew how to get past it. 16 was the first tournament that I was kind of a bit bored by, and this is surprising because I'm very impatient and we are 15 tournaments into the show. But yeah, 16, you know, I originally was going to put it in C, but honestly, thinking back at it, 16's in the D tier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to any 16 defenders out there, but it's really, it's really kind of a snoozer. Sasuke 17... <laughs> Do I really got to explain myself for this one? Actually, I do. Because for some reason, in retrospect, people are, like, hating. Not hating. But I do see a growing people amount of people who dislike Sasuke 17 for reasons that I really don't understand and I'm going to go into individually. So the first complaint that especially new fans have about Sasuke 17 is, Oh! Uh, you know, we didn't really have any standout moments, and it was all predictable. Um, first off, no. We did have a lot of, uh, breakout moments. First off, Koda Honma finally cleared. At age 16. That was huge, especially considering the guy has been trying to clear since 13. Both in tournament and years old. It was also really, really fun seeing Paul Anthony Tarek, uh, just come out of nowhere and basically do a Travis Allen Schrader 2, just beasting through the course. Yuta Dachi's story was, you know, very heartwarming to see, and it was great to see him get fairly far as well. Shinsuke Nagasaki finally get knowing how to climb across a ledge and just become the first person to finally beat the hardened third stage after four tournaments of pure and utter agony, watching everyone just completely suck at it. And Nagano making it back, you know, routine stuff for the guy, we all kind of expected that. But obviously, the final stage is what makes this tournament, and that was the second complaint for people. Oh, Nagano winning isn't a shock, and the final stage was kind of boring as a consequence, because we knew someone was gonna win when someone got there. And to that I answer, I don't care. It's still amazing. It's still the greatest moment in Sasuke history when Nagano won. Nagasaki gave a good effort for himself. I don't care. 17 is S tier. You can cry about it.